Hello all, welcome to the Mechanical Engineer. In this video, we are going to see the working principle of single block break and we are going to solve a few problems on that. So first of all, this is single block or shoe break. So it has a lever and a shoe fixed on it. So if it has only one shoe, then it is called a single shoe break. If it has two, then it is called a double shoe break. So the drum is rotating and when we want to apply the brake, a force, let us say P, is applied at the end of the lever and the lever is pivoted at the opposite end. So when the shoe is forced against the rotation of the drum, then it applies a braking force in this region and because of the friction between the brake shoe and the drum, the brake is applied. So now, coming to the forces on the single shoe brake, so when the brake is applied, there is a friction between this brake shoe and the brake drum. So whenever there is a friction, there will be two forces, we know that. So one force, that is a normal reaction, that will be acting perpendicular to the frictional surface. Let us name it as Rn. So this is a normal force acting perpendicular to the direction of the frictional surface. And another force will be acting in the direction of rotation. For example, if this drum rotates in the clockwise direction, the, the second force, tangential force Ft, will be acting towards right side. If it is rotating in the anti-clockwise, then it will be rotating it at, towards the left side. So, in a single shoe brake, there will be three forces. So, one is a force at the end of the lever. Then, force number two is the normal reaction. Number three is the tangential force. So in general, in the single shoe brake problems, the force P will be given and they will be asked us to calculate the braking torque. So the equation for braking torque Tb is equal to Ft into R. Here R is the radius of the drum and Ft is the tangential force. Okay. So the tangential force can be calculated by taking moment about the pivot point O. So let us take... Uh, the moment about O for this construction. So I am taking the anti-clockwise direction as positive. Okay. So first I am considering the force P and uh, before that I have named the distance. So here uh, from the pivot point to the Rn I have named it as X and the overall length I have named it as L. So in this case the force P into the perpendicular distance. So we know that when the force is acting in the vertical direction, we should take the distance in the horizontal direction. So it is P into L and this is rotating in the clockwise direction. Okay, So this is the pivot point and the P is rotating in the clockwise direction. So it is given in the negative direction. So minus P into L and the second force is Rn. So Rn is acting with an eccentricity of distance x. So the force Rn into x. And if you look into the direction, then Rn is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So the direction is positive. Now coming to the Ft, the Ft is acting on the same line of O. So there will be no perpendicular forces. So it is 0. That is equal to 0. So from this equation, the P will be known value, L will be known value, X is also a known value. Only the R1 is the unknown value. And we know that the relation between Ft and Rn is Ft is equal to mu into Rn. So from the equation you can calculate Rn. Then by substituting the Rn in this equation, so here mu is the coefficient of the friction. It is based on the property of uh, the brake shoe material. So it will be around 0 0.3 to 0 0.35. So we can calculate Ft. So after calculating Ft, you can substitute it in the braking torque and we can find out the braking torque. There are three cases based on the location of uh, the pivot point O. The first one is when Ft passes through the O. So just like what we have seen earlier, the Ft will be in the same line of O. So let us consider this drum is rotating in the clockwise direction. So force 1 is P, force 2 that is Rn, it is acting in the upward direction. As it is rotating in the clockwise direction, the Ft will be acting towards the 
right side okay so if i take uh, the moment about o that is equal to 0 then the first one is p into l and uh, the direction is clockwise so it is minus then rn into the distance x and it is rotating in the anti clockwise direction so plus and there will be no eccentricity in between the ft and o so that is equal to zero from this we can calculate rn and ft now coming to this if uh, we assume that if this rotating in the anti clockwise direction so force number 1 is p the second force rn will be acting towards upward and ft will be acting towards the left side so if i take moment then it is p into l the direction is minus as it is rotating in the clockwise direction and plus rn into x because the direction is anti clockwise so i have considered positive direction and there will be no perpendicular distance between o and ft so this is equal to zero we can calculate rn subsequently you can also calculate the ft now case 2 is when ft passes below the o so here you can see that there is some gap in between the line of action of ft and the fulcrum point o so let us name it as a and if the drum rotating in the clockwise direction then the moment is p into l as it is rotating in the clockwise direction the direction is minus and the second force rn will be acting upward and the ft will be acting towards the right side so it is rn into x and the direction is positive as it is rotating in the clockwise direction now the important thing is ft now uh, unlike the case 1 so here there is a perpendicular distance between fulcrum point o and ft so if you take moment about o then the force is ft and the distance is a so this will be rotating that is the ft will be rotating in the anti clockwise direction so the direction is positive that is equal to zero now instead of uh, this rn you can substitute rn is equal to ft divided by mu so instead of this you can substitute this so the only unknown value will be ft you can directly calculate the ft value here if this rotates in the anti clockwise direction then the ft will be acting towards left side with a perpendicular distance of a and the rn will be acting in the upward direction so if you take moment about point o then everything is same p into l the direction is minus plus rn into x and ft into a now you can see that the ft is rotating in the clockwise direction okay so you can assume that the ft is acting here because the force is a collinear one so if it acts like this then it will be rotating in the clockwise direction so the direction is minus that is equal to zero so here also you can replace the rn with rn is equal to ft by mu and you can calculate the value of ft this is case 2 and if you come to the case 3 uh, ft passes above the point o so let us consider the direction as uh, clockwise the rn will be acting in the upward direction ft will be acting towards right side with the distance of a you can see that the ft is acting above the point o so if you take moment then the distance is p into l this will be rotating in the anti clockwise direction i mean clockwise direction so minus and rn into x the direction is positive because it is acting in the anti clockwise direction now the ft ft is acting in the clockwise direction so this is ft into a and the direction is clockwise so minus so here you can replace rn and you can find out ft so if this drum rotates in the anti clockwise direction then the ft will be acting towards left with the distance of a and rn will be acting upwards so the equation of motion is 
P into L minus plus Rn into X then Ft into A. So here the direction is anti-clockwise. So the direct symbol is positive that is equal to 0. So here also you can replace Rn and you can find out Ft. So with these three cases in both the direction of rotation of drum, you can solve any problem on uh, the single shoe brake. Okay. So this is just for the concept. You don't need to uh, keep these things uh, remembered and uh, reflect in the problem solving. So you just understand the concept of these three cases. You can solve any problem. Apart from that, we have one more concept called uh, equivalent coefficient of friction. So earlier you have we have used only mu. So when the angle of contact 2 theta is less than 60 degree, uh, then the normal pressure will be uniform on the brake. In case if the angle of contact is that is 2 theta is greater than 60 degree, then the pressure will not be uniform then the wear will be uniform. So in case of uniform wear, we should calculate the equivalent coefficient of friction. The equation for equivalent coefficient of friction is mu dash is equal to 4 mu sin theta divided by 2 theta plus sin 2 theta. So here we should substitute uh, theta in radiant. Okay, so when uh, uh, the 2 theta is greater than 60 degree in your problem, you should calculate mu dash. So this is the first problem. A single block break is shown in figure. The diameter of the drum is 250. So the radius is 125 mm. And the angle of contact is 90 degree. So 2 theta is equal to 90 degree. So the given angle of contact is 2 theta, not theta. If the operating force is 700 Newton, so the force is 700 Newton, coefficient of friction between the drum and the lining is 0 0.35. Mu is given as 0 0.35. Determine the torque that may be transmitted by the block brake. So we should find out the value of T B. So I'm calculating uh, the 2 theta in radiant. So to convert degree to radiant, we should multiply it with pi by 180. So I am getting 1.57 radiant. So in the problem, the 2 theta is greater than 90 degrees. So initially I am calculating the equivalent coefficient of friction. So mu dash is equal to 4 mu sin theta divided by 2 theta plus sin 2 theta. So mu is 0 0.35 and uh, this is sin 45 uh, divided by 1.57 that is 2 theta. I have converted it into radiant and sin 2 theta is sin 90 degree. So the mu dash value will be 0 0.385. Now coming to the moment. So here you can see that the direction is given. So the direction is given as clockwise. So the FT will be acting towards the right side and the Rn value will be, Rn will be acting in the upper direction. So we have force number 1, 2 and 3. Now let us take a moment about point O. Okay, so here the Ft is acting above the fulcrum point O. So I am starting with the, the P force. So the magnitude of force is 700 into the distance between O and 700. It is 200 plus 250. So it is 450 and the direction of rotation is clockwise. I mean the direction of the force 700 Newton is clockwise. So it is minus and Rn into the distance between R and and O is given as 200. Okay, So earlier we have considered it as X. So now the direction is anti-clockwise. So it is positive. Now the third force Ft ft into the distance a is given as 50 mm. Now the direction of rotation of ft is very important because that is the only thing that will be varying for each problem. So here you can see that the ft is acting towards right side and it is acting above the fulcrum point O. So if you fix the point O and if you apply force here then this will be rotating in the clockwise direction. So the direction is minus that is equal to zero. So instead of Rn, I can use Ft by mu dash. So we should not use mu here. We should use mu dash. Okay. So if you solve this, then uh, here you can replace the Rn by Ft that is equal to Ft divided by 0 
385. So you can substitute it here. And if you solve this equation, then you will get a FT value of FT is equal to around 670 Newton. So now you can substitute the FT value in the breaking torque. So it is 670 into the radius is given as 125 mm. So you will get a breaking torque of 83,750 Newton mm. Okay, so if you want, you can convert it into Newton meter also. So 83.75 Newton meter. Okay, so we have started with calculation of equivalent coefficient of friction because the 2 d is greater than 90 degree. Then we have taken the moment and in the moment equation, be careful while taking the direction of FT. Then I have replaced the Rn by FT by mu dash and I have calculated the value of FT. And I have substituted the value of FT in the breaking torque equation and I have calculated the breaking torque. So this is the tutorial problem. A single block break as shown in figure has a drum diameter of 250 mm. So the radius is 125. The angle of contact is 90 degree 2 theta. The coefficient of friction mu is given as 0 0.35. So here also the 2 theta is greater than 90 degrees, so you can calculate mu dash. If the operating force is 650 Newton, calculate the torque transmitted. So we should calculate the breaking torque Tb. Okay, so you can try this problem and the answer will be around 65 Newton meter so that you can verify your solution. Thank you.